Welcome to episode nine of the CPA exam experience from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's podcast, we have an interview that I did with a past CPA customer, Richard Walsh, who is a attorney and now CPA in New York. Richard has been an attorney for years and decided to get into specific types of uh, tax work or kind of financial management stuff he talks about on the episode. So he decided to get his CPA. You'll hear us talk about what it took for him to study for and pass his exams, the process he went through from struggling in the beginning and then to the breakthroughs that he had when things started to click and he started passing his sections. Talks a lot about his test day experience and what was really interesting to me was his thoughts on how the CPA exams compare in difficulty with the bar exam, you know, because he's an attorney and now a CPA, he's someone who has done both. So his opinion on that is worth a lot. That's something I think accountants talk a lot about and kind of wear as a badge of honor. And they want to say that the CPA exams are much harder. So you'll hear Richard's opinion on that. We talk through a lot of topics. This call is just over an hour and I'm posting it essentially unedited because it's just a lot of very valuable stuff. If you're going through the study process and especially if you're struggling a little bit with the study process, you'll find this extremely helpful because we go through a lot of very specific study strategies, and also a lot of mindset stuff, which as you know, I'm always saying that's just as important as your actual study methods. You'll also hear him talk about kind of his first uh, experience with Superfast CPA, which was the free training, or he'll mention the training or the the free session. And that is the these free webinars that we do uh, most days of the week that you can sign up for. It's a one hour training where we just go through from start to finish our study process. And those are free. You can apply those strategies to any review course. So you can sign up for one of those trainings by going to superfastcpa.com slash training, or just texting the word pass now as one word pass now to 44222. And we will text you back a link to register for one of those trainings. Those trainings are extremely helpful. And as you'll start to see on a lot of these customer interviews that I'm doing, that is most people's kind of first contact where they find out about Superfast CPA and they learn kind of our study process and they go from there. And for a lot of people, it kind of ends up turning around their their study experience. So let's get into this interview. So excellent. All right. So now nice to meet you, by the way. Uh, you know, nice to meet you again. And, um, you know, I was, I was so elated when I, I uh, just so you know, before we even get into the questions, uh, when I finally did get through that first section of the exam, I really have you to thank. And I, I really do mean that. I mean, it was so frustrating for me in the beginning. Uh, you might imagine, right? I mean, I'm a longstanding legal practitioner. I, I yeah. did do my MBA. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, the level at which the test uh, required you to kind of get to, you know, uh, it, it just was, um, well, should I say it, it, it was a bit of a daunting task at first. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, you went through the same thing. Obviously you went through the same thing. That's what brought mm-hmm. you to uh, your course. But, um, it's one of those things where it does challenge you to the point where, you know, you really have to believe in yourself and continue the process or it would be very easy to give up. I can see how people, you know what I mean? could give up yeah. because, I don't think any of us, for the most part, we're not geniuses, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're capable people, but you have to be uh, driven, I would say, uh, to get through this process. It doesn't matter right. how much talent you have. The test will get you if you don't do the prep. Yeah, definitely. And it's, uh, it does, it requires a bunch of elements. Like you have to be disciplined, but there are a lot of people out there that are just kind of grinding all this time into it. And they're just kind of missing mm-hmm. a few pieces of like how they study. And so, right. you know, they keep failing sections, people that are really putting in a lot of work. So it is, there's, there's different elements to it. So, so yeah, just to start at the top, um, how did, or what made you want to, cause you, cause you're an attorney, right? That's correct. Yeah. And then you, there was a portion of tax work you were wanting to get into. Is that why you wanted to do the CPA? That was one element of it. it, it it's interesting. Um, I, I felt like I had really accomplished a lot. I, I, I uh, started my own practice back in 08 and uh, right in the depth of the financial crisis. Yeah. Um, but 
I had always wanted to sort of try to find a way to get back to the sort of the business side of things um, from practicing law to, you know, maybe managing a business or being a, a product head um, for a company unit. And I thought that the best way to kind of reinvigorate my, my, uh, my career and, and my potential prospects would be to actually uh, go through the CPA because in researching how many CPAs there are in the United States and then, you know, combining that with getting some perspective on how many CPAs are also licensed attorneys, I thought that it would actually reflect well on me if I could mm -hmm. make it through the CPA with the MBA and the, and the attorney license that, you know, from a credential standpoint, I, I would be in a good place and, and that that would afford me opportunities that I otherwise would not have, you know, had I just continued on the path of, of really essentially being an attorney uh, with an MBA, but not with a professional credential that says, um, hey, you know, uh, th this individual uh, represents um, someone who not only do we not have on our team, but brings sort of a unique combination of credentials that when he signs off on something, that means that somebody who's a financial expert, essentially, uh, in at least, you know, some, some regard, and a legal expert has reviewed and, and signed off on something that, you know, we don't necessarily get the same perspective from people who might have one or might have the other, but don't have both together. And, and that was really kind of, you know, my own brainchild. And, you know, whether over time that works, um, we'll see. But, you know, I felt like it was the right timing for me to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, you really get opportunities, I, I think, in your, in, your, in your life where you can carve out the type kind of time that, that you need to set aside for this. And I feel like it's like climbing a Mount Everest you know what I mean? In a way, yeah. as a professional, to get to get this accolade, I, I, I view it as an accolade as much as a, a professional credential. Right. Because we both know what it took to go through this process, and you know there are other nooks and crannies, right? To to actually getting the license, you know, it's not just getting through the test. But if if I mean, if you don't have the wherewithal, if you don't have it in you, the test will make sure to show you the the exit door, you know what I mean? Pretty quickly. Right. Um, and then I just had the faith that I could bring together the other things that you had to bring together to get the license. I, I, I was not fortunate from the standpoint of the experience being recognized by necessarily all the different states. I did get my license from New Hampshire actually just last month. Nice. Um, and I had to take 20 credits of classes. I was short 20 credits. <laughs> and I, I signed up with two different online colleges and in six weeks or was it seven weeks, I, I took 20 credits of accounting classes. And I'll, I'll tell you, Nate, I mean, as an attorney and someone who, you know, prides himself in being organized, that's probably the most disorganized thing that I've ever had to face in my life was that I was told that I was short 20 credits by NASBA. When I said, yeah. hey, I passed all my tests and, you know, I, 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 I paid for the interview because I actually was uh, in charge of a CFIUS audit. I don't know if you've ever heard of CFIUS, but it's a national security review of an acquisition by a foreign uh, company. And mm. uh, because of the two years that I was the CFIUS counsel, the, um, uh, the review board at, at, at NASBA allowed me to uh, get credit for those two years because it was audit experience, oh, wow. you know, for those yeah. two years. But if you go to New York, right, New York would say, well, you know, who oversaw you at Price Waterhouse for two years? Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? And so right, I was right. really fortunate in that regard. But you and I both know, right, it doesn't matter once you have the CPA license. Correct. You know what I mean? It's, it's good pretty much, I think, across all 50 states, right? Maybe there's yeah. a few exceptions about how you carry it. But for me, in terms of the way I'm going to be looking to use it, it's, you know, it's my pride and joy right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is, I mean... Yeah. Seeing my fourth passing score, that was, that was up there, like top three moments I mean, ever because it was just so much Especially that work. experience that you must have had. That first test when you failed that one, you missed it by a point, right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Like I remember yeah, listening to your, to your speech in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was a great pep talk, by the way. It really <laughs> drove me, actually. It really made me realize what I was up against. Um, but that story, man, 
you probably, it's worth the price paying you just to listen to that because I, I'm being absolutely serious because, you know, that, that was really in an essence, you know, you explaining to us what we're up against and what we're going to have to do to, uh, to conquer it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really fascinating to me and I'm so glad that I, I ran into you, uh, you know, you do a good job, I guess, of finding ways to uh, attract people through YouTube and whatnot, but you got that down, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's but, well um, it, but, 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 you know, more than anything else was your practical, almost in your face honesty about, you know, how difficult this whole thing is. And it really is. But if you get the right mindset, you'll get through it. And, you know, you made me a believer more so in myself than, you know, any of these other programs that are more driven around a curriculum, really, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you even said it as much yourself. It wasn't yeah, driven around one the, the frame of mind yeah. that you need to be in. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so, so, so how did you, you. Uh, by the way, I wanted to meet you in, in Utah. <laughs> I went skiing last year. Uh, and I, oh, I was, was going to look you up. You're in Utah. You're in Utah. Yes. Right? Oh okay, yeah, you should have time. sent me an email. I mean, I I, I would ski. love to meet you in person. Yeah, uh, yeah, I ski. I was so. in Park City for a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I that's where we do like weekend getaway. You know, just little weekend trips. It it's awesome, right? It's such a nice place. It yeah, it is. It's and it's cool. They I mean, the for you, so it's a cool early, place. Right? Yes, they, they did. The parks down, but you guys were yep. getting some good snow, weren't you? Yeah, it was a good. Uh, it was a good winter so far. So yeah. Yeah. Well, excellent. Let me, let me not interrupt you. You were about to say something. Um, so what did you, what did you do to start? Did you just buy a review course and just kind of start studying? How, how did that? That's help? exactly right. So, so, okay. So when I first started, I was a little timid, you know, I, I had read, um, you know, some background literature on the exam and I, I said to myself, it sounds like far is the right, is the right exam to start with because that would seemingly be the most challenging of the four, just, just based on the fact that I'm an attorney and my inclination would probably be more towards the audit and the reg sections. And I, my own personality is get the worst of it over first. And, and so I, I figured that was going to be far. Okay. And, um, I, I signed up with Glime just to take far. They had a special, you know, they all have their specials going yeah. on and they said, well, it's half off this month. And I said, you know what, try out one of these prep courses for one of the sections, because if it doesn't work for that section, then you will, you will not have wasted your money on the three other sections. Mm -hmm. But what happened when I purchased Glime, the materials are excellent. I mean, they're all excellent, right? I mean, you know, but book Glime was, I Correct. thought it was great. I mean, but he had a very thorough guide, you know, a very thorough book. Yeah. Um, there are lots of exercises. Um, but I tell you, I was flipping out, um, when I started because I was getting fifties on the practice quizzes and I was like, I don't understand. You know, I read the material three times. Yeah. I, you know, I went through all like, you know, all the hoops after reading the chapter, I went through their little kind of modules, um, because, you know, that was part of their thing where you would just kind of, you know, click yes or no, I guess, to some of the questions and then they would get to like a little practical module. And in the beginning, this goes back to a pointer that you uh, made uh, in your course. Uh, I skipped the one part of all of it that would have actually helped me more um, had I actually uh, uh, done them. And those are the journal entries. So in other words, you got to a point in the review um, of the chapter where after the yes, no questions, which I could get 100 on and feel good about, then they really got to practical skills, right? So they would mm -hmm. kind of give you, you know, some information and they would say, do the closing uh, journal entries, you know what I mean? To, to, uh, to reflect what, what's just happened here. And I skipped them because I was like, ah, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to do that, you know. And then I just went on, you know what I mean, to take the practice exams and then I would get 50s, you know, on those. Yeah. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm an idiot. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not getting the material. Um, I'm, I'm spending too much time on some of these questions and it's taking me about three times longer than what um, I probably need to, to be doing in order to pass the exam because you, you would lose, right? You, 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 right. you would get all sorts of freaking out after, you know what I mean? Four or five questions. You're like, wow, there's only eight minutes on a shot clock. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to speak, to get through 30 practice questions. And so what I realized was that while I was uh, superficially understanding at a high level, the concepts, 
I didn't really understand how to utilize them in practice, meaning like, you know, even though I, I could give you the definition of, you know, you could name almost anything, right? And I could tell you what, in principle, it means, I wouldn't know how to apply it. And, yes. and, and so the, what happened was I wasn't kind of, you know, bridging that gap uh, with the materials because I wasn't really being given the guidance to say, okay, this is really what you're missing. What you're missing is, is that you can, you can study something forever, but it doesn't really mean that you're necessarily good at applying it to, to anything. I mean, it's almost like, um, think about it, right? I mean, it's like somebody knows a little bit about everything, but really nothing about, you know what I mean, uh, anything to the core. Yeah. And, and so I wasn't getting to the core. And, and, and to get to the core, that's where you came in because I was like, wow, I'm like, no way am I going to pass this exam with these experiences because already I've got a bad mindset. I'm getting 50s on these. Even if, let's say, I have a good day and I get a 60, that's not going to get me to a 75. And so I was desperate. And I think, I don't know how I found like a link. You were giving like a presentation, a free presentation. Yeah, I yeah. probably do them periodically. Mm -hmm. And I listened to your presentation and, you know, it really rang true to me because, you know, it was exactly what I was missing. And that was that I was, I was, I was reading and reading, but I wasn't really learning. I, I was, I was essentially absorbing, but then it was going in one ear and out the other, if you know what I mean? Like I was, yeah. I was constantly inundating myself with material, but not learning the material. I mean, it was just, it was the most bizarre experience for me as a lawyer where, you know, I, I can write, and synthesize difficult concepts and write and espouse, you know what I mean, uh, poetic, if you know what I mean, on, on so many different uh, levels. But I just couldn't make it work here. And it was frustrating me. And I, 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 I almost got to the breaking point until I, I, um, I, I saw your, uh, your video. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to try him. And if, if he can get me over the edge where I can at least feel like there's potential light, you know what I mean, at the end yeah. of the tunnel, I'm going to do this. Um, because it became a personal challenge right at that point. I'm like, wow, sure. you know, I'm an MBA, yes. I'm, I'm an MBA, I'm an accomplished attorney and here I am failing a college level exam, but they're not, we both know they're not college level exams, yeah. but I was associating right. it with what would have been college level. There's nothing really, frankly, college level about it. It's, it's very exactly. challenging, but uh, you know, you, you kind of felt like diminished, you know what I mean? Because you felt like, yeah. Hey, I'm just not good enough. You know what I mean? But it was really kind of almost like tearing yourself down to nothing and then rebuilding yourself so that basically you were a machine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Going through this stuff and, and nothing would throw me off after going through your course and getting into your mentality, which probably was the most important thing, actually. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let one question like stump me too long. Right. I, I either yeah. got it or I would, I would boil it down to two guests and move on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and like, because I'm like, it's really your hit ratio and it's your hit ratio at a minute or less. You know what I mean? Right. And that was pretty much, you know, the way I started approaching it and the 50, 55 started to go to 68, 71, you know, 74. And then I was like, wow, I, I might actually really do this. You know what I mean? But it, <laughs> it was the most um, time consuming situation because I literally started studying on my way out uh, West. I drove out West and I listened to the tapes mindlessly, you know, 50 million times, not yours, but somebody else's. Mm -hmm. I got back in February and I, I said mm -hmm. to myself, wow, I better take a section of this test. So I signed up to take it in April before the window would close, right? Because I guess you register and you only get a certain amount of time before yeah. you have to take your first test. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like February to April, I started to get nervous because I was getting 50s on the tests. And that's when I ran into your, into your video. And, and um, I, you know, after that, I literally had to just do nothing but this, you know what I mean? For, for mm -hmm. two months straight. Mm -hmm. And it was nerve wracking because I never really had it beat. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I just got yeah. a little better. I got a little faster every day. You know what I mean? At it. Yeah. And then I, I think I told you, Nate, um, thanks to you and, and, and what you were able to do through your course for me, I got an 89 on far and, and I'm a lawyer That's and awesome. I, I, I didn't have, I, I'm not an expert accountant, if you know what I mean. I, yeah. I, I, I'd probably be the last person that I would want to do taxes. Like, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, but, yeah, yeah. Definitely. For whatever reason, I was able to put it together that day. You know what I mean? And, and like, when I got through those multiple choice questions, I pretty much thought I slayed the dragon, if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> I, at that point, I'm like, even if you get 50-50 on those, uh, 
what do they call them? The, the sims, simulations. simulations yeah. I, I said, I got to be at 75, right? I mean, you know, that's what I was telling myself after the mm-hmm. first break, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and I know that you didn't take the break, but boy, you know, I was so fried, if you know what I mean, by the time we got to that point. And I kind of felt like, you know, even if I didn't do that well coming back from the break, I probably still passed the exam. I wasn't really concerned about anything but passing. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't right. the kind of person like I'm looking to get a hundred on this. You know, I was looking for a 75. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was the, that was the same as me. I just, I wanted to pass as fast as possible. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, so I think, does that give you a feel for kind of how that experience was? And then, and then, you know, once I, I, I got through far, and especially when I got the score, I was prepping audit. I went into audit after, after far, and I didn't really know how I did. I still didn't know if I passed. I mean, I know that might sound strange, but you know, the 89 is a respectable score. But it, when I walked out of there, it was the most weird feeling I've ever had in my life. It was like, first of all, you felt like you went through like the equivalent of the bar exam, you know what I mean? Just for one of those exams where you're just fried, you know what I mean? Like you, you are right. mentally drained, you are tired. I mean, it, it takes so much out of you. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's a fight from beginning to end. It really is. At least for me, it was. And, and, you know, I got out of there and I'm like, wow, I'm like, you know, even if I don't pass this, I think I give it a hell of a shot. You know what I mean? That, that's kind of like the way I, I looked at it. You know, I, I felt kind of sneaky good, if you know what I mean, but not mm-hmm. like elated from the standpoint that I definitely did it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's, there's it's just hard too to know. Mission. There was too much mission. Yeah. Right. But but that was it. And then, and then you know, the scores never were as high as that. I, I did an 84 on audit, but I, I think that you know, part of it was that I was a little comfy, you know, with that topic as a lawyer, you know, it kind of spoke to me, you know, there's, yeah. there was like a lot of socks and stuff like that, where it went back to like lawyer uh, concepts in a way, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't, it wasn't so heavy in, in, in the accounting. And then um, BEC was one that I thought I failed. I'll be, I'll be absolutely honest with you. I thought it was, it was extremely hard on the multiple choice. And I, 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 did something that I would recommend that people never do. And that was, I had a little bit of extra time on the Sims and I had the right answers. Um, and then I changed them to wrong answers. Cause I remembered <laughs> when I kind of like got into the car, you know what I mean? Like yeah. what I did. And then I was checking things in the book because I remembered some of the multiple choice mm-hmm. and the multiple choice questions were getting extremely hard. They were throwing out this weird stuff you know, at me, like, you know, what's, what's hyperboling or, you know, like th- those things, you know what I mean? About the different ways that people attack your IT system and whatnot. And they yeah. said, what, what's, what, what, what's, yeah. what section of the, of the, of the code, you know what I mean? Says this or that. I mean, it was getting really, really specific and whatnot. I'm like, wow. I'm like, these must be experimentals. These must be experimentals. You know, I, I keep on saying that to myself as I was seeing these, but they just kept on getting worse and worse. You know what I mean? Like, like mm-hmm. I was like, wow, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm going to pass this. I mean, I was really getting nervous. And then we got into the Sims and then I, I started changing answers. Um, I, I, I knew that I nailed one of the Sims. It was on uh, cost accounting. And boy, I, I don't know how you get around uh, that exam and not know cost accounting. I mean, that, right. that's one it's thing a, that they, they, it is. they, they, they hate huge you with part. that. And, and, and uh, you know, that was fine. And then as a lawyer, I probably cleaned up on the essays. I got an 85 and I, I honestly thought that I failed that. <clears throat> I honestly did. And I, I, I got on the phone with my wife, you know, after that exam and I'm like, Oh, looks like I'm taking that one, that one again. <laughs> I was too deep into it to not kind of see it through. And yeah. when I got the 85, I thought I was the happiest guy in the face of the earth. I'm like, wow, that was the most dreadful experience of my life. And, and I got an 85, but people should not sell that section short, man. I mean, I think it's that's true. one of the most wicked things. Yeah, you know, there, there is, it's, it's very wide and, and all the sections on it are very, very different. Whereas audit is kind of like all the sections are different, but they all kind of sound the same and are at least similar. Right. But BEC, yeah, you're, you're going into completely separate topics. Yeah. Just, and it does it. Uh, and, and, and then uh, red oh, is ahead. a bear. Reg right. is a bear. I mean, as a lawyer, I took too much for granted. Uh, Reg can really sneak up on you, you know, because there's a lot of tax related stuff in there. And mm-hmm. if you don't know that stuff cold, you're going to miss a lot of questions on that on right. that multiple choice. That was my worst score. I got an 80 uh, on that one. 
I, I thought I did better actually on that, but that just goes to show you how many guests, how many, I, I almost forgot how much I was guessing. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? Like once you've been yeah. through three and you're in the four, you kind of like start to take for granted that if you pass the other three, like something's really got to go wrong. I mean, no matter you should never be thinking that, but I think you do. It, it just, you know I mean? I, I think it starts to become like a fait accompli in your mind, you know, that, that yeah. you're going to get through it. But I should have never had that mindset. And let me tell you something. The Sims were pretty rocking hard too. You know what I mean? Um, right. The so Sims reg on is, reg are ridiculous. They're, they're all tough. They're, they're all tough. I think you're, I mean, especially if you, you've got my background, your best bets audit, but I, I think I did it in the right order for me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, definitely you got to take far first in my view. Uh, it drives right. the rest of the studying. Uh, you got to do that first, I think. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of like, a, you know, you could do probably reg or audit, but I'd recommend audit because it's kind of like a nice way to kind of get a breather from like. And they are, they that, are connected. You know I mean? So, right. That is a, that is kind of a good recommendation, like far for sure. So that your 18 months doesn't start till that's out of the way, but then audit yeah. does connect to far quite a bit. So, yeah. And, um, and BEC, so, don't sell it short. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's tough. Yeah. So one of the things you said when you were struggling in the beginning and you felt like you were spending all this time kind of hearing the material or exposing yourself to the material, but you weren't learning right. it, what was the That's shift? Right. Like, how did you study differently after that kind of helped you actually be learning it? Right. So when I did get into your materials, I realized that, well, there were two things. The first thing was the flashcard. I did 1,280 flashcards for FAR. Um, yeah, and that's... what I would do is every single question that I got wrong, instead of just going on to another exam, I would make a flashcard about the concept, you know, whatever yeah. that concept was. Mm -hmm. And I would even start to make up in my own mind either a question that was very similar or potentially identical to the one that I got wrong. And then I would work out in the answer in a, as brief a way as I could, you know, the answer. So, you know, for some people, you know, it's what your comfort zone is, but I felt like the flashcard was a way to break it down, like, re, you know, reconstruct what happened in the question effectively in your mind, and then really walk it through so that every step, like, it's almost like a step-by-step -step process, right? I mean, to break, yes. how you break down the question mm -hmm. and then how you put it together, that's what the flashcard I thought was helpful for, because it really, that was the learning, actually. The learning was the, the production of the flashcard. So the flashcard became the flashpoint for my learning. Like, in other words, you know, at the end of every day, it was the longest part of my day because I took stock of what I got wrong and I, I learned what I got wrong by making the flashcards about those questions or even, you know, could have been like a review topic in the, uh, the practical uh, part of the review section of the, you know, of the main book. And, and so I would just, you know, I, I would just do flashcards. And so I had so many for far because I was failing everything. And so I just, you know, I, I really had to start from, from the beginning again, using your methodology with the flashcards. And then what I would do is every morning I would read a couple of clips from your book. I call it, I call it a book, but you know, your notes, right? I, yeah, I call them yeah. like cliff notes. Like I, I, I took your cliff notes, you know, and, and, and so like, let's say I was going to do leases, right? Mm -hmm. I would take your section on leases and I would just read it like four or five times to try to just try to understand the core, the, you know, the, 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 the substance really of what yeah. you really had to understand to be able to break down a question. The, you know what I mean? The core of the logic behind, you know, what you're supposed to be learning. And what I liked about that was that it kind of just gave me a sense of how to, how to start to look at questions from the standpoint of not over reading anything into them but really relating it to the core concept that, that they're trying to test and not going beyond that either to the right or the left, but just staying center, staying center, you know what I mean, on, on the core concept. And that's where your, your cliff notes helped me was just basically trying to stay centered, you know what I mean, on all these topics where yeah. I wasn't going overboard in terms of, you know, the detail with which I was trying to learn it. But learning it from the standpoint of, 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 of being able to practically apply it and, and focusing on, on just the core concept and, and not, you know what I mean? Because I think that was another issue I had before I took your course was I was getting too caught up in the details. Like, in other words, you could learn all these little, you know, minute details here and there. 
but that wasn't going to help you pass the test. What was going to help you pass the test was understanding the, the, the critical concept and then knowing how to apply it quickly. And, and, mm -hmm. and the only way to really do that was to take your book, you know, read your book for those core concepts, then take the practice exams and then do your flashcards at night. That, that to me was the recipe of how I got better. I mean, that, that, that really is in essence what I did. I don't know if that makes sense, but that, that's kind of yeah, how no, I Oh, totally. It. Yeah, I, uh, making your own flashcards, mm -hmm. that is, that's an absolutely huge, because you, you explained mm -hmm. it really well, kind of different than I've ever thought of it before, but I, do, I have a video on that in the course of like, you, you want to make flashcards on things that you keep missing or for whatever reason you personally mm -hmm. struggle to understand. And then the way that you put the flashcard together is in a way that, you know, you personally, because to write the flashcard, you have to kind of get to where you do understand it, you know, right. so you're kind of explaining it to yourself and you're like, okay, I get how I, on the front's going to be this and on the back is this. And that just is a way yes. for you to connect things, you know, for yourself specifically to where you can right. understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then a lot of people use our notes like that. Um, read them before, read the section before they go into their full lesson. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, and then, and then interestingly, I started to use your pop quizzes, you know, your, your, yeah, your the little, mm -hmm. yeah. And, 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 and that was like a friendly way to test yourself when you didn't really want to kind of grind, if you don't know, I mean, exactly. like 30, you know, a 30 question section, but it was a way to kind of like, it was almost like a snack at bedtime. I mean, not, I mean, I'm being kind of sick, I guess the way I look at it, but it was kind of like, ah, let's do a quick five, you know, like a quick five pushups. If you're trying to get, in oh, shape, it, you know, it's like, and, and know, see, that's, like, that's the exact idea. Like that is the exact idea is it's just supposed to be. And, and people ask me a lot, you know, why, why can't I choose the topics or, um, why, why is it just five at a time? And I tell people, I'm like, listen, just trust me use them. Like I say, just open the app and just do five, do a mini quiz, you know, right. Even when you have like two or three minutes and when you do that all through the day, it makes a huge difference anyways. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that you, you, you just made a really good point because it was the fact that it was so random, you know what I mean? It's like, you, you know, you could ask something on, you know, the first section of, you know, what, what are the requirements to, to, uh, you know, to ethically represent your client or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it could be something like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're asking me a, a question about how to amortize a bond. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like right. it, it kind of like, that's, what's great because you know, that day, let's say you just worked on, 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 um, on bonds, you know, that topic that you covered four sections ago, a lot of that stuff is starting to, you know, not evaporate, but it's not going to be fresh. And, exactly. and by doing the five question pop quiz, you go back to the front of the book and you're like, why did I get that wrong? You know what I mean? But it's great because it just forced you for, for like five minutes to bring it back to the, you know, to the front of your mind. And so you're picking up points. That's really what yeah. you're doing, right? You're picking up points on the exam because, you know, you're either it's going to save you time because you're not going to have to think too hard. You know what I mean? When you see that question, because you just saw it on one of your pop quizzes one week before you walked into the exam. Right. Um, and, and, or you just kind of made sure you learned something that you actually didn't really learn because, you know, your questions are, are, are worded in such a way where they're not meant to be trick questions. They're just meant to really kind of be a gut check as to, Hey, do, do you, for the most part, do you understand the substance of the topic? I mean, that, that's, mm -hmm. let's full stop. I mean, that, that's really kind of the sense of the, of the, of, of the level at which you were testing in those quizzes, but that's good too, because, you know, once you start getting five out of five on those. It's not that you're going to necessarily ace the test, but then you, you, what you, what you can start to get confident about by doing that and getting the five out of five is that you, you are get you're becoming a well-rounded student. You're becoming, you know, fairly well-rounded where maybe you're not a servant at any particular section, but you got enough to give it a fighting chance. You know what I mean? You know, to, yes, no matter what they're throwing at you, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and that, that was one of my big realizations is, uh, my first time around, because I didn't know any better, I just assumed that the test would be a bunch of the absolute hardest questions on the hardest topics. And so that's where I spent this inordinate amount of time. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you get in there and there's a lot of, you know, they're simple questions, but you had to have really studied every lesson. And so it's that, it's that coverage of everything that you have to be good at. 
And uh, a lot of people make that mistake of, you know, in their final review, they just go study the five hardest topics over and over. And then you go in and you might have three or four questions total on those five topics. So, so it's more about coverage. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and the other point that I would make is that one of the things that was um, becoming, should I say, a, um, a psychological barrier for me was that I was never that fast at the bond questions. I was never, you know, I, I felt like I was losing too much time, like, like, you know, playing around fiddling with a calculator and, you know, like trying to, to get the answer. Yeah. And I, I would, I would do 30 bond questions and I would never finish them. I, I would literally never finish them. Not even, you know, at the very end of my studies, I got a little better, if you know what I mean. So I got, mm -hmm. I got pretty close, but I could never do 30 in 30 minutes. And I realized that some of those questions were about a half a paragraph or a paragraph, you know, long. And so right. I said to yeah, myself, yeah. look, you're never going to be as good as a guy that is, you know, uh, an investment banker, you know, who's been doing this all of his life. What you need to know <laughs> right. is that you're not going to get 30 bond questions on the exam. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I had to stand back and say to myself, what you need, you need to have enough of an understanding. So even if you can't get through the question because of time constraints, you at least can narrow it down to the point where you got a pretty good shot at guessing right by boiling it down to two of the four choices. And, you know, that's kind of what I said to myself, just learn the concept, make sure you're comfortable that you know how to do the work to get the answer. Don't stress about the fact that this is taking you twice as much time as it is to answer questions that speak more to your legal talents that you should be ripping through. So in other words, one of the one of the other sections that gave me quite a hard time was government. Um, yeah, government accounting. The, the, the government section was terrible for me for two reasons. One is as an attorney, I thought I, I thought I should ace that all the time and I was failing all the time, all the questions, no matter what. Mm. I eventually worked up to a 65 average on those questions. And I'm like, this is pathetic. Uh, here I am <laughs> worrying about bonds and I'm getting 65s after killing myself on, on government. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I missing here? But it's like one of those things where I was so thankful every time I saw a government question, you know what I mean, on the exam. And I got quite a lot of them. I know that you'll find this maybe bizarre, but they kept on throwing government and nonprofit, you know, at me. No. But that's what yeah, I said exactly. to myself in the end. The only reason why you're going to feel good and, and have a good chance of passing the test is to leave no stone unturned. And for me, especially given my background as a lawyer, I said, you've got to get the government and nonprofit questions. You have to, because if you don't, you may get stuck too much on the ones that require more accounting, you know, core accounting and, and math related skills, because that's yeah. just not your school spot. It killed me. But I, I did as much as I could and the 65 was good enough, you know, on average. But it was much more than that. You know, in the end, I was doing lots of flashcards. I was really learning a lot, you know what I mean, about the material, mm -hmm. as dry as it was. Um, but, you know, that saved me because the things that I was not getting right on the practice exams, they weren't getting to that level of detail on the actual exam. So what I think some students might find is that don't get too intimidated by the fact that, I mean, I'm not saying that you could be feeling good about 50s. But if you're in the 60s and you're in the mid 60s, maybe 67, 68, and you're really putting the time into the flashcards, don't think you're not doing yourself a service by keeping at it. Like meaning like, you know, may maybe as part of your study diet, those things that you're weak on, you just throw a few in there, if you know what I mean, along with whatever your priority is that day, yeah. just to try to build up, you know, a little more stamina, you know, on those questions. Um, but do not ever think that because they say it should be 10 to 15% of the exam, that it couldn't be 50% of your exam. Because I'm telling you, I must have had 50% nonprofit and government questions on my multiple choice questions. That is what I felt like uh, my first, there were, I just felt like there were a ton. And, and uh, like you said, I knew going in according to the blueprints that it was 10 to 15%, but I felt like it was higher than that. But yeah, just again, you just, you have to have, it's, it's all about coverage of everything. Exactly. Not, not knowing how to, you know, value bonds like an expert, like you said. Right. And, so, and I'm uh, trying to think of the other things that you did with your course, right? So we covered, we, we covered the, um, 
the quick quizzes. We, we covered um, the core uh, written material. And then your tapes. I mean, we've left those out, right? I mean, the tapes, what was great about the tapes was that it was literally your book, your, your Cliff Notes, if I, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's basically, recorded. right. And, mm-hmm. and, and so what was great about it was it wasn't trying to, again, give you too much detail. It was just trying to hammer home the core concepts, you know, for each section. And, you know, that's what really kind of builds you up. It's almost like uh, base strength training, right? I mean, it's like, hey, I, I, I've got I've to gotta kind of um, get my balance, right, before I can lift the big weights, right? I mean, there's like stepping stones, right, to, to be, you know, an ultimate, ultimately fit person. It's the same concept in terms of how you study. It's like you got to build yourself up so that at least you know the core concepts inside and out, and then you can start getting better at, hey, I could actually do the journal entries because, you know, I, I'm listening through this and it's starting to make sense and I'm really learning debit and credit. And, you know, that is the one thing that you also emphasize. And I would say, please continue to emphasize, you've got to understand conceptually the debit and credit process because they are mm-hmm. going to hit you so hard on that in the simulations. At least that was my right. experience. Yeah, it, you don't that understand is. that. And it's easy not to, it's, especially if you're not an accounting major. I, I was not an accounting major. Mm-hmm. that is the thinking of an accountant. You know, it's, it's, it's assets equal liabilities plus equity. And then learning what that means from a debit credit standpoint. Do, do you kind of see what I'm saying? Left, right. You know yes. what I mean? And, and it was like, it was that simple, but yet it was that complicated. I mean, I guess that's the best way to put it, right? It was that I hadn't mastered that when, when I was first studying before I got to your material, you gave me a push in that direction. I mean, it, you didn't like, you, you didn't, uh, you, you kind of took a middle line, but you did, you did put it in there. But I would tell you, go more forceful on that. Go more forceful on, guys, you really got to get to the core of it. The core of it is assets equal liabilities plus equity. And how do I describe that in an accounting journal? You've got to be able to do that in your head and you've got to be comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, you're not going to get through the exam. That's another point that I would make. And I would hammer that home. Well, and that, that, Something you said earlier when you were struggling in the beginning, you would, uh, you know, you mentioned you would like watch the video lecture, read, read all the chapter, um, and then kind of ignore the, the debits and credits, the journal entries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and part of that is, you know, when someone sits down and they have a few hours to study, you know, you're learning this new stuff that's very it's dry, like you said, and it's very technical. So it's, it's new to your brain. It's hard to grasp. And when you start with the video lecture and then read the entire chapter, you've, and then you do those little true, true or false kind of diagnostic questions that I don't think are that valuable. But what I'm saying is we only have so much, uh, kind of brain power, you know, at any given time. And that just gets whittled down spending like two or three hours before you mm-hmm. even get into the practice questions or the practice simulations. Yes. And I know for a fact, that's what happens with a lot of people is they get kind of ground down mentally and just get mentally tired within the span of one study session, yes. just as they're getting to the most important thing, which is going through the practice questions and the simulations. And so that's why I recommend you start it in reverse to get the context of, instead of watching the whole lecture, this from this topic, this is the kind of question you're going to see. This is how the concepts translate into a question and you do it backwards. Right. And here's another thing by going through that whole process of like doing the journal entries, you know, especially even at the end of every section, if you pay for the whole course, I'll I'll get to uh, what I did after I got through FAR. But when I was in FAR, I bought, you know, I bought the whole luxury package, but -hmm. they do do that. They do have you kind of go through that debit and credit thing, you know, like I described at the beginning, but that is the prep for the Sims. It's not taking, this is the kind of funny thing. It's not actually uh, taking all those Sims that make you feel like, Oh my God, I'm never going to pass this test. I mean, I, for me, they were so intimidating when I was taking yeah. those Sims, but actually in a way, the best way to practice the Sims was to get really comfortable with journal entries and understanding, you know what I mean? Like what was going on um, yes. you know, in those, in those backend reviews, 
and that is preparing for the Sims, if you know what I mean. Like that, to me, that was better than taking the actual Sims themselves because yep. you, you, you had the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you need to be able to understand and appreciate, I think, to be successful is that it's just that comfort with the way you're thinking. It's like if you're not a practicing accountant and it's not you know, second nature to you, it's just basically going through those motions as tiring as it can be to break it down to that basic equation. You know, I mean, again, maybe I'm overplaying it, but I don't think I am in a way. It's kind of like saying to yourself, you know, maybe other than some of the special topics, how does this all shake out in terms of how I would represent this in a series of journal entries? If mm -hmm. you can't get there in this material, you're not going to get there on the exam in my view. And in addition, I will say, if you can get there in terms of those back end review questions at the end of each chapter, you will get there. That, you know, that, that, that is my point of view. Maybe you won't get a, um, a high score, but you'll get a 75. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another trick too. And I know that you downplay the Sims and I agree with you. The Sims are so all over the board. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think maybe there's two or three topics that you should focus on with the Sims, but I think you could really lose critical study time by getting caught up in the Sims. I, I, I agree with you. I don't know if I'm overstating uh, kind of your point of view on that, but I, I, would, I would tend to think that your best value is doing the multiple choice and then doing your flashcards at night because let's face it, there's just not enough time in the day to do it all. And, and so, you right. know, where are you going to get your most value? Where you're going to get your most value is doing those journal entries. I mean, if we're just talking about FAR, which I think is pretty much, you know, the, the, the big one. Um, learning those journal entries and the thinking and, and that goes into understanding debit and credits. Um, and then um, uh, focusing on the multiple choice questions and doing those flashcards at night and then doing your quick quiz reviews um, as a way to kind of just put a little icing on the cake. You know what I mean? At, at yeah. the end, I think that's the recipe right there because, you know, people who go into those Sims and they spend a lot of time on them, they're not going to really help you learn in my view what you need to know to be able to actually get them right to begin with. And they're just going to start intimidating you because you're going to start to see stuff. You're like, wow, I, I can't make any sense of this. And I certainly can't do it in 20 minutes. Um, you know, that's not good. You want to see yourself getting better, not in a deceptive way, but in a way that makes sense from the standpoint of broad coverage, incremental improvement, you know, for the most part across the board, and understanding sort of the, the, the core methodology, you know what I mean, that, yeah. that goes into the way you do this stuff. That's what you focus on. If you start getting too caught up in any like bad set of Sims, that is just bad energy. You, you don't want that. And, and you have to be efficient about your energy. If you're not efficient about your energy preparing for this exam, that's another recipe for disaster. You, you really have to, you know, watch yourself, right? Because you can't go off the deep end on anything. And it's easy. It's, it's easy to do yes. that. I was gonna I say, yeah, and I was, I was going to say that uh, when you explained kind of your test taking or the test day experience, and, and you do, you have to kind of go in there with kind of this shield around your mental, I don't know how to explain it, but knowing like, okay, I can't freak out when I get in there. I'm not going to, you know, get stuck in a black hole on any given multiple choice question or, or simulation. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah, you do. You just have to have a very clear idea of how you're going to approach it strategically before you go in. And, and here's another good point about the, the multiple plan. choice. You know, you emphasize it in your course. And like I said, I agree with you. And here's the other reason why. What do you see first on the exam? You see the multiple choice. Yes. That's going that to the tone. That's set the tone. Psychologically, yeah. that's going to set the tone. Exactly. And it, it, it's a huge time thing too. You want to be done... Yes at least at halfway, if not sooner. And so yeah. I, 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 I was trying to get through those sections. I can't remember some of the, some of them varied a little bit uh, in terms of the number of questions, but I tried to finish those first two sections in an hour and a half. And I don't know if that's too slow or too fast, but I, I didn't want to be there for more than an hour and a half because I knew I, I, I required that extra half an hour, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. on, on the Sims to give myself a fighting chance, at least on those that I could, you know, potentially get more on. Um, yeah. 
because also I, I think that if you spend too much time on those questions, it's almost as if you're, you're, you're hurting yourself. Even if you get the point on one that you spend too much time on, you're potentially sacrificing points that you would get later uh, more readily, but you might miss because you got flustered and took too much time getting one of the questions. So I would say no more than a minute and a half to two. Make, you know, two's pushing it, but no more than a minute and a half and try to get through them in 30 seconds. I mean, you can actually, yeah. I mean, there's a lot that are like one sentence. For, mean, right, know, right. So, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of conceptual ones that if you know the stuff, I mean, it's like a 10 second total. Yeah. Yeah. And don't go uh, back and change the answers. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And I, yeah, I would, I would tell myself that before there, there is, there's yeah. something about the uh, kind of your first instinct and at the same time, you've got to read them very careful. And my, mm-hmm. o- my other trick for that was going to the very last sentence, especially on ones where there's like a paragraph prompt or whatever. Right. It's the very last sentence that is the actual question. Right. And a lot of times, multiple things said before that aren't even relevant. Anyways. That's an excellent yeah, that's point. that's granular. Um, so we kind of went through almost everything I had here. So besides what you uh, described, what, what did you do in the last few days before an exam that you feel like helped a lot? What I did the last few days before an exam, I stopped drilling myself on um, uh, tests. So in other words, I, I did not, I did not, I, like the last four or five days before the test, I literally weaned myself off of doing the review uh, exams, if you know what I mean. When I see review exams, I'm not talking about a full-length exam. I'm talking about yeah. 30 questions on the clock. And then what I started to do was really just go with my flashcards. Yeah. And so basically for the last week, I would say probably for the most part for the last week, I wanted to kind of almost like tail off the stress of – going through exams and rather just really immerse myself in like enriching my brain with every little thing I could in terms of the vast number of flashcards that I created. And you know what I would do? I would play around on Quizlet. I made my flashcards on Quizlet and there's little games you can play, you know, you yeah. shuffle them around. It sometimes doesn't even make any sense, but it's just kind of like fun ways for you to kind of like play around. And then it's a weird thing, but you start gaining confidence if you kind of shut almost all the noise out from all like the, you know, the, the voluminous, uh, uh, coverage of the topics, you know, in the books and everything else. Yeah. And just focus exactly on kind of like mean. the way you broke it down to learn it and just appreciate that. It's almost like you're kind of giving yourself a pat on the back as, as you go into the exam, you're like, wow, look at all the work I did. You know, you, you're looking at all of these flashcards and you're like, you know what, even if I didn't pass this exam, boy, did I do everything I possibly could have to pass it, you know? And then that kind of thinking actually makes you more determined to pass it, right? Because you're not freaking yourself out anymore, taking exams and then finding that you got one wrong that you shouldn't have and you took too much time on that one and why, you know, how did you get tricked on this one? It, no, all that is now becoming a memory. And what you're doing is you're building up your confidence because you're learning what you already know. And you're, and, and at the same time, it's, coming fresher and fresher you know what i mean so that you're yeah. getting faster in your own mind about how quickly you can rattle off a potential answer to a question and you're doing it your way you're not doing it their way or your way you're, you're doing it your way and and you know what i mean that's that that i think is building a sneaky confidence up you know what i mean like as you get into the exam that's where you need to be in mind definitely yeah and that was a that was something that i realized as well was from a, like I always thought when I was away from my test materials or whatever, just thinking about it through the day, I would think, I kind of feel like I don't really know this stuff. Like if I had to get up and lecture on it, but then as soon as I would open a quiz, like close to an exam, I could answer like everything. And, and that is what you need to be able to do, you know, on exam day is just answer the questions. You don't need to be able to give a impromptu lecture on how bonds work. You know, that's, you, you don't need that level of like knowledge of how it intimately works behind the details. You just need to be able to answer the questions you're going to see. And yeah. 
And just knowing that that is what's important, you do, like you were saying, you get to where you feel really good about, okay, I'm, I'm passing this test. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and that was the other thing too, is that because you don't leave any stone unturned, and when I say that, what I mean it is, is that you, you covered thoroughly every topic, you start to feel like, you know, hey, there's going to be a number of bonds, right? And some other stuff that I'm not going to be really comfortable with. But chances are, well, let's say that that's four sections of 20 that, that you're not so comfortable with. Chances are they're probably not going to focus on those four topics. Yes, you need to know them like you need to know all of the 20 topics. But try to just get faster on the other 16 so that you feel really good about those 16 topics and that you're fast and that those four topics, you don't go too hard on those, but rather you look at it from the standpoint that hopefully you will build in extra time because you're so good at the other 16, you know what I mean? That those four, when you do face them, you can get your extra 30 seconds or 40 seconds or whatever you need and still feel like you're, you know, you're moving through the exam well. Mm -hmm. And that really is, I, I think part of it, part of it is always being able to have the perspective that no one, and I mean no one that's walking in and taking these exams is going to feel great about all 20 sections. Right. But I think they're, they should be feeling pretty good by about at least 15 of the 20. Mm -hmm. And I think you could probably say that about yourself when you went in there the second yeah. time you know, take mm -hmm. it to say that, Hey, you know, I'm feeling pretty good at least about 15 of the 20. And I know enough about the other five where they're not throwaways, but they're, they're certainly not areas that I thought that if, if I put much more time into, I was going to get that faster at answering those questions or that I was really going to understand any better the core concept. And frankly, two months is not enough time to become, you know, right. an expert on any of these particular topics. Exactly. Right. Any given topic or subtopics, there are people with their entire career based on being an expert, you know, so it's just... You can't it's think a trap. like, it's yeah, a trap. exactly. You can't think I need to know everything about all topics because you can't get there within the time span to be able to pass the four exams. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of like, um, you know, having a comfort level with how to apply the concept to a question, you have to have it, I think for all 20 sections, but being necessarily gifted or not gifted, but, 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 extra comfortable, let's say, at, 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 at doing that quickly, you're just not going to get there on 20 sections. So mm -hmm. what you got to go for is you got to be able to at least understand the concept well enough that you can apply it to any question. How fast you're going to be and, and, and how comfortable you're going to be in each of the questions that are thrown at you, that's anyone's guess. But you're bound to get pretty darn good at at least a majority of the topics. So don't let the minority of those topics where you're not feeling so good um, wear away at your confidence because you just really need to focus on getting a comfort level that at least you know the critical concept and you can apply it, meaning that you're not learning it skin deep. You're learning it, you know, to the core where you at least know how to, how to do it. But you also, and, and this is part of learning, learn like what you're good at and what you struggle at. So when you see those questions on the exam that you're not so great at <clears throat> and you don't feel like you have that much time, Yes, and just get to the next question. Yes, it, it, it could change your shuffle, but I'm not expecting that you're going to do that a lot. But do it enough where you've got three or four lifelines, let's say, for yourself. Mm -hmm. and you say three or exactly. four times, if something's not in my sweet spot, I am skipped. I'm guessing I'm moving on because I don't have time for this. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, in, in your head, in a good way. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't want to get caught up in this. I want, I want to keep the momentum. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's kind of the way I looked at it in the exam. There were a few questions that looked really odd in, in the FAR. And who knows? Maybe I was doing so well on it that they started to throw a lot of experimentals. I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't take the time to get caught up in it. I guessed and moved on. And I think that probably helped, right? Because, oh, totally. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and I think that if I had tried to, you know, put um, a lot of effort into them, it may have cost me a lot of points because I may have actually started to put time into it. And it's just that little bit of, of 
uh, energy wasted, if you know what I mean, that can snowball into a negative experience very quickly. That's what I was thinking as I walked into that exam is I don't want anything but positive energy as I'm moving through this thing. And I should know enough that I can just pretty much whip through, you know, the vast majority of the questions and those that look a little odd or, you know, like, hey, I'm not like absolutely comfortable with guess and move on. Maybe what you do is you mark down, you know, a few of those questions where you kind of guessed and moved on, because then you're not kind of re trying to learn the question. No, what you're doing is you're making sure you get through the whole set of questions. Yeah. And you're marking three, four, maybe five questions. And that's not that many, right? When you think about the suite of questions that you get. And then when you get to that last question, you answer it and, and you're like, wow, I wanted to get through this thing in let's say 50 minutes, but I got through it in 42. I got eight minutes. Exactly. So go yes. back to book five, give it eight minutes, you know, mm -hmm. from the very beginning to the end. And if you get far enough in any of them, you're, you're like, this is gravy, right? Cause I'm, I'm basically, I'm basically getting points that I hopefully don't need, but I, you know, they'll just boost me a little higher going into the Sims, but I didn't kill myself. And I most importantly didn't compromise questions that I was more comfortable with because I got scared of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is, that's a lot of good test day strategy. So then at the, just uh, to end, how about the day you found out your fourth score and like, what, what was that like finding out you got your fourth passing score and then what'd you do to celebrate or what was that day like? It was interesting. You know, I was down visiting my parents in Florida, you know, and I, I, I got the, uh, the result and, um, I was just like, it was so interesting because I was pretty sure I had passed. Um, but it was almost like, uh, just a real sigh of relief that, you know, I could finally say, you know what I mean? That it was over, even though it wasn't, I mean, I, I shared with you all the other things you have to, yeah. you know, the hurdles to get the license, but it was like a sense of like, wow, I'm like, I really did it, you know? And I can't, you know, kind of, thank you enough for kind of that initial speech that you give about how seriously to take it. Because I have to say, I don't know if at this juncture in my life, I really could have done it had I failed any of them. And I know that might sound like, you know, you know, you would have done it, but I mean, think about it. I have a wife, I have a family and it's like, if you'd put the kind of time into it that I did on, on far, and then kind of came up short. I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I don't, right. I don't, I don't know if I would have, you know, gone through it all because I think you can relate to this, right? It's a journey and it's, it's a six month journey. I mean, that, that's really what it is. I mean, you tell me, but I don't see how you get through this thing in less than six For months. For sure. Yeah. Right. And, and that's, I mean, you kind of have best, best case scenario cause you went four for four and, uh, but it, you know, it sounds like the, the point that everyone has to get to is where the study process clicks. And as long as you can get to that point where you just feel like, okay, I know how to study for this. Like I know what to do day to day. That's kind of the, that's almost a bigger hump than passing your first section. I mean, I think, I think Nate, I think the gem really with you and the way you outlined how to prepare is the flashcard. I think it begins and ends there. I really do. because that's your work, right? That's you taking this bizarre material at times, right? It feels like it's kind of bizarre mm -hmm. stuff for all of us, depending on the topic, right? And like figuring out a way to metabolize it. And that's the flashcard. I mean, in essence, that's yep. the flashcard, right? It's like metabolizing what you're eating. And I feel like that process is very different in a good way than just taking notes, you know, normal Absolutely. notes. Absolutely. It's totally, it's a totally different thing. So I, I tell people that in emails all the time. I'm like, okay, are you doing flashcards? And they'll be like, well, I do notes. And I'm like, no, not notes, flashcards. You write and your I, own flashcards. I recommend like something like a Quizlet because then it's kind of like, it's easy that way. I mean, I think everybody's on computers now, right? I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I think in the beginning I might've thought about that, you know, like maybe writing stuff and that's not, not. You know, like, yeah. you know, like, you know, get something where it's kind of like, it's very user friendly. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I found that I was trying to perfect my, my own flashcards. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, you yeah. know, I, I kind of adjusted it a little bit, but that's part of the learning process. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, 
you're painting your own Picasso. Like, like look at it that way, right? You know, like, you know, I mean, like, yeah. you know, like it's true. oh, I missed a spot there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'll, I'll kind of clean that up a little bit. I'm sure you got into that kind of a bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just kind of like, uh, I, I want to adjust this a little bit. But that, you know, that's it. That's what it is, right? I mean, that that's that to me is is, is the part of the process where you're like, wow now you're really going to, you know, you, you got a really good shot at passing once you get to that point, right? Because then yeah. it, it's kind of like you're adjusting the material just right so that it's perfect fit for your brain. You know what I mean? That's, a, that's another way to look at it, right? So it, it, it's like you're synthesizing material in a way that relates to the way you learn. And that is the flashcard process, I guess, in essence. That, that to me is, is the way to look at it. And if you don't do that, and you and you and you rely on the way somebody else learns because that's what you're getting when you read their book or go through their materials and their reviews you're not going to get the material to the point that you're going to be able to confidently pass you might but you, you you'll probably struggle on the exam day and maybe you'll walk out with a 75 the people that get 75 and higher with confidence they take that material they break it down, reconstruct it in such a way through the flashcard process that it clicks in their brain. And then they take that and they get better and better and faster and faster at doing the questions. That's the process. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, I almost use those exact words when I'm explaining how to do Sims. I say, break them apart, understand mm -hmm. kind of what's going on. You don't just mindlessly do endless practice simulations right. and look at them break them apart and put them into flashcards that make sense to you that's way better than just doing a ton of uh practice sims so yeah all right well yeah we we covered a lot that was really good i think this will be really valuable to anyone Thank listening you. to this um, and I'd be happy to speak to any of your students or prospective students if they just want to get a feel for is this process for them or you know is this something that they want to do and like I said, I didn't have a lick of accounting in me. I mean, I, I, I did take one accounting class uh, as part of a required MBA curriculum, um, but I don't know what got into me, but I decided to take this on. I'm so glad I did. I mean, you know, it's, it's an accomplishment for us all, right? There's not many yeah. of us. Right. I mean, it, 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 it really is to me. I take somebody very seriously now when I know they're a CPA and I'm an attorney. <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Because uh -huh. you know, you know what it takes. It's just kind of like, you know, somebody climbed Mount Everest almost, right? And you're, you, you relate to that, right? You relate to that experience. What did it take that person to do that? Well, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, my dad is an attorney. Now he's a judge mm -hmm. anyways, mm -hmm. but for you, how do you feel like the exams compared to the taking the bar? I thought they were the most challenging exams I've ever taken in my entire life. Hmm. I mean, forget the bar. I mean, yeah. I mean, you cover effectively the bar in, in these four, in these four books. I mean, you do really, right. You, you know, contracts, uh, you know, there's a lot of legal concepts. All the business. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You I mean, know, I wouldn't know, but uh, I mean, that's, that is an interesting yeah. perspective. Someone who's done them both. Oh my God. And uh, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where like you can memorize the law almost. I mean, you do have to have a practical way to apply it to a fact pattern, but it's not nearly as nuanced. And as I think, um, requiring sort of almost abstract intelligence applied, if that makes sense, uh, you know, as, as this, it just doesn't, it, it's not a good comparison. You know what I mean? It really is yeah. because you can literally, almost memorize like those legal concepts and it's not challenging you to get out of your comfort zone because really even though law school isn't a great preparation for the bar it's not it's it, it, the way you think doesn't have to change to pass the exam and i really do believe that i had to change the way i was thinking and the way i was learning to pass these exams if that makes sense and and that yeah. to me took it to a new level and it's, it's incredible. You know, I'm in my forties and I, I took this thing on and, and, uh, boy, what a way to wake up your mind. Yeah. It's a good, I mean, you know what I always thought of, um, when somebody asked me like, you know, what was it like, you know, going through all this material, did you ever see the movie Firefox with, uh, with Clint Eastwood where he steals the, uh, the plane, um, from Russia? Have you ever, you I know, have heard of that movie? 
Mm-mm. Okay, I know. So I've got a generation or two on you. But <laughs> so what happens is that you'll laugh at this, right? So he he they the Russians make this new fighter jet, okay? And so Clint Eastwood goes over there and he has to sneak his way in there so that he can steal the plane. That's his mission to to steal the plane. And so he steals Firefox. He gets into it and he and he flies off, right? And what do you think they do? They chase him. But their plane isn't quite as good as his, right? So, you know, they got one or two chaser planes, you know, here and there. But the funny thing was he had to speak Russian to the airplane, to, you know, to, to the Firefox in order mm-hmm. for the thing to be able to shoot missiles and guide him, you know, through. And he was struggling at the time to get it into his head, you know, like, I got to think like a Russian, what, you know, like, well, you know, like, what would I say, you know what I mean, to, to, yeah. to make this door open for the torpedo? you know, for the missile. And I kind of re- relayed that to a, a gentleman that, that I was uh, at a party with. And, and I said, I felt like I was Clint Eastwood sitting in the, in, in, in this, in this plane trying to say, think like an accountant, you know what I mean? Like think, you know, like, 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 <laughs> what would you, what would you do? You know what I mean? Like, what would you do? What would you say to, yeah. to, to get this done? And I'll leave you with that. But I, I thought that was kind of an interesting concept myself, you know what I mean? Because it, it, it kind of like, you know, you had to draw on, the process of thinking all the time, you know what I mean, to get through the exams. And it was foreign to me as a lawyer. I, it was a different way of thinking and looking at the world in a way, you know, going through these concepts and being able to apply them. But I thought that was a little funny um, uh, anecdote. Um, you know, it's like, you know, like sitting there and you're, you're like, you know, why isn't this coming naturally to me? You know, like, what, like, like, what do I, how do I need to think? be able to answer this question you know i mean that that is I, that is part of it too right i mean it, it really is getting into the thinking of, of of the exam um uh, uh preparation uh, uh person and 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 really thinking like an accountant right i mean you know yeah. that, that's you know it, it's a different thinking if, you, if you're not in accounting by background well and it's it's also a good point because uh people ask me all the time you know I, it's been years since i was out of school or or sometimes I'll have MBAs ask, should I go and do a master's in accounting? And, and like you said, the CPA exams are their own thing, even, even when you're straight out of a, a MAC or a, mas- a master's in accounting. Like it, it, it doesn't directly apply. And so no. in a sense, everyone is kind of starting at the same spot with the CPA exams. So, I mean, that's just helpful for people to realize, I guess. Like you don't, you don't need to be right out of a bunch of accounting classes because they don't necessarily apply. So. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, maybe with the exception of some of the topics, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Maybe I wasn't at a disadvantage. You know, maybe, maybe the fact that I had to kind of relearn it in the way that I would have to apply it on the exams put me at, you know, at a similar level to most people, but for some of the topics. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a very good point. Well, yeah, what it was is we, so right. There is some overlap. Like I had these deep accounting or uh, tax classes in my master's, but they would go very, the the class would go very deep on just one little piece of the reg Mm -hmm. section. And and so the, the masters really did not help with the CPA exams that much anyways. Well, yeah, again, yeah. Thank you for doing this. It was, uh, we've gone over an hour, so yeah, I don't want to, Take no, no, too no. much of your time, but it was, I appreciate it. yeah, I'm, I'm glad, you know, that we could help with your process somewhat. Thank you. And that concludes the interview with Richard. We kind of just chit chatted after that. So I hope you found that really valuable. Like I said, we covered a lot of things that if you are in the study process currently, I think you would say that that was very helpful to hear some of his breakthroughs and things he figured out that really started to work for him. Again, To register for one of the free trainings, that's the best place to start with Superfast CPA. To see how our study process works and see if these ideas make sense to you is with one of those free training sessions. Again, that's at superfastcpa.com slash training, or you can just text pass now one word to 44222. Other than that, if you found this helpful and you're a current listener or subscriber, please take the time to go and, uh, you know, leave a comment or in the YouTube comments or mostly at this point when the podcast is is new like it is to rate and leave a review on the podcast specifically in apple podcasts or wherever you listen 
So again, thanks for listening and watch out for future episodes because we're doing a lot of these interviews with past CPA customer, super fast CPA customers. And I think you will find a lot of these very, very helpful.